Okay, there it is. I think that's dancing. Is he dancing? He had to take dance classes, remember? Yeah, that's right. Oh. I got to, like, get, you know, I got to get a teacher and get some process going. I got somebody behind. Right now, I just have somebody behind me that has, like, the little <laughs> stick tied to my arms. They just kind of, like, move me back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing the whole uh, Weekend of Bernie's thing, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, clever, clever. That's not good. not because I'm dead, just because I'm uncoordinated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That uncoordinated. But. That's actually really hilarious. <laughs> like that's that's borderline <laughs> genius. Uh all but right. Let's well, talk about fighting. That said, let's talk about this PFL card this week. Welcome back everyone to the MMA Viva section with me, Zane Simon, and my co-host Eddie Mercado and Victor Rodriguez. We are here to talk about PFL 2018 event number four. There must be a fucking better way to brand these cards at this point. Like, <laughs> if this is what you're doing for the foreseeable future, I don't want to have to be like, PF PFL 2019 regular season number one. It lo it's looking like a like a boat license, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like PFL 2018 number 4-3.7. Like, all right, yeah. whatever. Subsection J. Yeah. yeah. PFL Lance Palmer versus... Well, I guess I can see why they call it number four. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, made you a believer real fucking quick, huh? You shall receive. Wow, yeah. there you go. Well, I mean, listen, if the, if the, if the uh, unconventional naming is still, you know, I'd, I'd take that trade off of having kind of a weird naming system, but still having quality fighters on a card. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah, I yeah. think what they should do, honestly, is take kind of the NASCAR approach and just start labeling it the event, the venue. Use the venue as the name of the card. Hold up, no, because there's going to be two events in a row from Nassau Coliseum and two more in Atlantic City, so that kills that. Yeah. And you're going to have Atlantic City one and two. You know, like come on, you want well, that? You're there. There's I, no. I, what stops them from going back later in like September, October? I guess it just. Maybe they are stuck between a rock and a hard place. When you're headlining cards with Lance Palmer versus Jumabek Tuarshan, there's not really like a a name value to be put out there. Mm, yeah. They still need like it's still twenty eighteen number four regular season is it's very Japanese. It's very like Jeep Osaka Impact twenty four twenty seventeen. Yeah, it's very clinical. Yeah, no, it's, it's no very personality there. It's very deliberately uh, uh, troublesome in some way. It's, it's, I don't know. Uh, well, they should at least, you know, they, they should go back to like the classic UFC or like King of the Cage system where it's just like words. Yeah, like, like Fist of Fury or something. Yeah. Like how they bring mm. Because <laughs> this one would be PFL, Lay and Pray. <laughs> Let me stop. Well, that's what one championship is. One championship does that, but it's like it, it's they're going to run out of names at some point. How many, you know, heroes of bravery? How many of these can you really? Well, come you up know, with? you just then you start dipping into like the uh, oh uh, IKEA naming system where you just oh. get like you know. Yeah, I like that. That's good. That's like you yeah. get like a Swedish guy reading a re reading a Tex Mex menu. Yeah. Yeah, or he just like he picks random letters out. It's like, oh yes, it's very Swedish. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they need help though. Their branding yeah. is is. Just build a generator. You make a bot program and you just yeah, build exactly. a like, name generator. Okay. Build an MMA name generator and try not to make it let or let it be racist. Yeah, like, pythons <laughs> and pit bulls, and you're like, oh okay, I get it. <laughs> hmm. All right. Hmm. Let's dive into this card because it's you know for an eleven fight fight card that's not the UFC. There's a lot of stuff like pretty much every card has something on it that we're gonna want to talk about at least a little. And there's odds for the whole thing. So and what's crazy is this card is better than the individual Bellator Bellator cards last week. But yeah. if, if Bellator would have just put all their shit on one card, it would be you know somewhat comparable to this. It would, it would have been better because the the big fights on those Bellator cards were better than the big fights here. But the whole thing, you know, you had like a 16-fight Bellator card that's just like my cousin versus my brother-in-law. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. All right. At least these are names. Yeah. So let's start out. Heavyweight bout. Valdrin Istrefi versus Daniel Gallimore. Eddie, who are you picking on this? Uh, I'm definitely picking the Streffy. 
He got wrestle fucked by Jared Rose Schultz in their first fight uh, of PFL one. Um, but he did land some solid strikes in that fight. So I do have a little bit of hope for him being able to inflict some sort of damage before the other guy does. Gallimore, he's extremely regional and he can get beast up. So it's Treffy by TKO. All right. Vic, who are you picking? You know, along with the scoring system and the fluke things that can happen with it, which we're not going to get bogged down with right now, uh, the other, the bigger thing that's bothered me about the structure of this organization's format right now is exactly this. Gallimore just got beat up last month. Like, yeah, is he... by Francimar Bahos. First like, man to let that happen to him in like a decade. <laughs> How does that happen? And like, no one's batting an eye? I don't... That It seems a little strange to me. But, all right, fine. Yeah, Gallimore, just on that alone, like the fact that he might still be... Concussed. I don't know. The, the fact that it's that recent and he might have suffered a concussion? Like, and even then, I don't... Uh, uh, six months before that by Mike Kyle. So this could be his right. third, you know, loss inside a year if he gets knocked out here. It could. And he's fighting a guy who's been, I mean, you know, he does have some finishes due to strikes, mostly on his record. He only has like two or three submissions. Um, you know, he is someone who's more likely to strike as, and of course I'm referring to his Uh ah, Fuck man. I, I got to go with this Treffy on this just because of the fact that, you know, it, it, you, you take a guy who lost by being blanketed against a guy who's lost now twice in a row by getting sparked in a short order. I don't know, man. I don't really like this. Although Gallimore does have some range, and he is able to, like, you know, if he's if you give him enough time and real estate. But you're not picking him. We got a lot of other fights. But I can't pick him, so no. Okay. Yeah. And I lied when I said there are odds for everything. There are odds for almost everything, this bout not included. So we're moving right along. Uh, another heavyweight fight, Sean Jordan versus Josh Copeland. Vic? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah, I don't like Sean Jordan's chances, man. I, I got to go with – I mean, if Copeland's smart, he'll probably start using his wrestling approach and all that, and I don't know that he's really too uh, – I don't know how much – I don't know how much stock to put on that. So I'm probably going to go with Sean Jordan hitting him with something wild. <laughs> Is that yeah. true? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not frozen. No, that was it. That, yeah, that was beginning, middle, and period. That's it. That's all, all right, I gotta say. Big, big, <laughs> like what? my internet is that unreliable. That it's like yeah. On Jordan, pick. What do you got for me? So Jordan, he didn't fight in PFL one because he missed weight by nine pounds. This cat's <laughs> missing weight at heavyweight. Yeah, nine pounds. <laughs> I can't. God, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh. Like you can't. That's too much. So How do you eat your way out of fucking heavyweight. God. Especially he's a six foot heavyweight. It's not like Sean Jordan's out there like six foot seven, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. Alexander Volkov out here. Yeah. Yeah. So he joins the tournament at a disadvantage, which seems fair in this particular instance, but rather unfair for like the actual new competitors. But I mean that's what you get when you implement this sort of point system in combat sports. You know what I mean? It's like, like it, it'll work for NASCAR where the vehicles are virtually the same, but with the spectrum of MMA, it's like, you know, experience, talent, athleticism. There's so many facets that I don't think a point system like this will really work out. But so he's, he's didn't sustain any damage in week in the first week because he was too fat to fight. And, uh, you always have to be so terrible. <laughs> what? Oh, what? It, it's it fun. I mean, it, it was. I it just. It just sounds so fucking funny. I'm sorry. It, I mean, oh man. The truth is is stranger than fiction. So mm. uh, Copeland has the better chin. He lost PFL week one due to a body kick. Uh, Jack May kind of actually put it on him surprisingly, uh, but Copeland still has a pretty damn good chin. And Jordan isn't like a, a body specialist like he's he's a head hunter pretty much so i think uh copeland with the better chin jordan has the better arsenal of strikes and a history of finishing his opposition but i think this is going the distance so i'll take copeland in that all right uh odds on that bout do we have them yes josh copeland is the underdog in fact uh they've only been open for a day so it's not like but they opened at plus 175. They're already up to plus 210 on Copeland. Ooh. And 
Jordan opened at minus 245, and they're at minus 260 now. So a lot of people giving Jordan a lot of credit for this one. Mm -mm. I think that's a bad look. Copeland's a live dog at those odds. Yeah, seems that way. I mean, he, even like I wouldn't even put this at like plus minus two. I'd put this at like plus minus 100, you know, like basically yeah, yeah. toss up. Pick them. Pick them odds. Yeah. All right. That brings you to a featherweight bout. Timur Valiev, Derek Minner. And well, real quick, do we know if uh, Jordan actually made weight this time around? Uh, no. Let me see. If, have mm. PFL4, have we got PFL weigh ins? Mm. I haven't mm. seen. Usually they email me like. Yeah, they usually PFL4 weigh results. They like in, seriously. Here we are. Yeah, we've got. They're, they're out there. Uh, Jordan 264.8. He hit the line. Current weight misses. Carl Deaton missed against Bekbalat Magomedov and Derek Minner versus, missed versus Timur Valiev. Both featherweights. Okay. Well, but it's funny that Jordan misses weight last time and then he barely makes it this time. That's cute. Yeah, well, I Damn. mean, what was he going to do? Like, so what was the. Oh, I'm sorry. Derek Minner missed yeah. weight? Derek Minner missed weight against Team Revaliev by two Yeah, rounds. so like you got the the two smallest featherweights in the whole shebang. Yeah, both have to fight guys who who <laughs> came in heavy. That's some bullshit. Nah, we'll get to that. We'll Even get to that. So Minner. Well, we're getting to that now. So yeah, Timur, anyway. Like I said, he's undersized, but he was able to hold his own against Matt Koga in PFL one. Uh, Minner is new to PFL, and now I know he did not make the weight requirements, so I doubt he's really here for the, you know, expecting to win the tournament because I don't think you can get points if you miss weight, right? Isn't that the rule? I'm not sure how that affects. I, there's, you know, there's been so much to keep up with. I feel kind of bad that I don't have this off the top of my head. But I don't remember. I do remember seeing something about this. I think if you miss weight, you can't. You don't have opportunity for points. Uh, let me see. So I'm it's still gonna... it's still a zero. Why why would you even? So Timor can still get six points if he finishes in the first. Wow. Five so if he's, he finishes in the he's second. Still wow. The third, three if he gets a decision. That's brutal. I mean, but regardless, I mean, Timor has the experience here, and Minner has been submitted like five times in his career. So I'm taking value by sub, and probably in the first round. This this might be a, a I don't know. This yeah, is probably the easiest earned, fight the athlete had will still be able to compete, but will earn zero points for that match. Right. So he's out there for like the base pay. I mean, mm. I got, I get it, but that also seems kind of dumb. Like, that, yeah, that seems very, putting, very pointless. If they're putting on fights and you go out and you spark somebody, like, I mean, but look at it from Minner's point of view. It's like, well, shit, I'm already like a week behind in this point scheme, so I'm probably out of the running already. So why not come in a little bit heavy against this undersized uh, featherweight and, and maybe make somewhat of a name for myself, possibly if I get the win over a Timor value. So fair enough. Yeah, as a pro fight, as a whole fighting career, it makes sense as a tournament format i'm kind of like eh, i don't really like but that's a good way to get on you know it's like oh shit you knocked out team more value yeah, it's like okay let's see that rematch and, outside and of the season does already have another bout scheduled apparently mm -hmm. although actually that might be canceled because he he's got a bout with kevin croom scheduled on the 27th for uh oh what's it dynasty combat sports and that's yeah. like a week out. So he's got a fight yeah. scheduled a week from now. I can't imagine that that's actually going to get sanctioned. I mean, it might, but like... I, yeah, but it's uh, it's probably not, depending on how binding these contracts might be. Like, he might have agreed yeah. to that bout first, then gotten the PFL offer. That one goes up in smoke, but it hasn't been removed from yeah, the record yeah. yet. So just a little clarification. It might still happen, but, you know. Anyway. You're, so you're picking value, right? Yes, sir, by submission. All right. Vic? Oh come on! Valiev has a much more uh, he has a much more defined foundation for his skills, and he is a better athlete all around. So Valiev. All right. Odds are uh, Minner is coming in at uh, opened at plus five fifty, now to plus six twelve. <laughs> Valiev opened at minus ten fifty, now at minus nine sixty seven. 
Man, I recommend staying the fuck away from that because of the uh, the weight discrepancy. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, unless you're like a dog hunter and like you have to you have to bet the 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 fat underdogs and whatever. But yeah, just, well, it's also you know minus a thousand odds on a dude who lost to Chris Gutierrez. I mean, that's not to say Chris Gutierrez is bad, but it's you know like <laughs> Timur Valiev isn't like there are uh, levels to this. I'm lock for yeah. you know, winning everything at all times. That's wide as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> That's really wide. All right. Mm. That brings us to another featherweight bout, Max Koga versus Marcos Galvao. Vic, what are your thoughts? Uh, see, this one's a little – it's sad to me because I've I, I've always had a soft spot for Galvao, and I, I don't know, man. I just, like – I think he might be able to pull this off because he is a sort of weird, crafty veteran, even though he has um, – his, his defensive game has been – very much figured out by now. Uh, I just don't know, man. Koga might be able to put him out, but I'm just I'm going to be stubborn on this one and go with Galva. I just I just think that he's got more uh, more to offer when it comes to the submission game and you know being able to over the long haul be able to keep himself together with the striking and outpoint him. So, uh, yep, Marcos. Eddie, you taking uh, Galva to pick up his first win in a minute now? So. If Vic has a soft spot for Galvao, what's the opposite of that? Because that's what I have for him. Uh, oh, boy. Hate, uh, <laughs> a, a bottle of Haterade? Like... A, a, not a bottle, like a jug. Like the big orange one that you can like dump the whole <laughs> shebang in. And mm. <clears throat> Yeah. I don't, I don't care about this fight, man. Honestly, I just don't. Galvao lost four out of his last five. Koga's super regional. I'm not going to waste the coin flip on this because it's not worth it. So I'll just pick Galvao by decision. All right. You're both taking Galvao. You, even despite a, a – I guess the opposite of a spot, soft spot would be a, dis, a distinct hardness against, a distinct firmness of like yes. feeling a toward – away from. Yeah, you know? a, a real apathetic – yeah, yeah. A coldness. I'm real short and cold with <laughs> Galvao. Yeah. But I'm taking him none the fucking less. All right. But you're taking him none the fucking less, which, I mean, credit to you. Galvao is coming in as a massive underdog here. Opened yeah. at plus 242, is now at plus 376. Koga opened at minus 325, is currently at minus 494. Man. Nobody's feeling, y'all. I don't want to call Galvao a live dog, but like. <laughs> Honestly, who has Koga really beat, though? <laughs> He's never beat anyone on Galvao's level. No, but this is, this is the old lion and the young guy coming up who, like, you never know, man. Listen, sometimes some of these cats are able to improve from one fight to the next or just figure someone out. You never know, man. You never know. Well, yeah, I mean, it's fighting. You never know until they do it. But, yeah. like, there's no... <clears throat> I don't, I don't understand these odds, I guess, is what I'm saying. And because I don't agree with them, it makes Galvao a, a, a deal. Like a, He has value at underdog odds. I think we also have to remember and, and keep in mind that these are fairly recent. Am I correct? These didn't yeah, go these, up these that odds long just ago. Open, so they might so be that, just, but I mean... But yeah. even, like, the opening the odds... Fight's tell tomorrow. You, so, like, the odds just open. The fight's are tomorrow. They're not going to adjust that much, you know? And the opening odds tell you what the odds makers think. Yeah. The adjustments tell you what the betting public thinks. Man, yeah. as much as I hate it, he's actually a deal at at those odds. I love I how you just I love how you gotta eat it right now, like damn, I I hate him, but mm. Because like I don't want to be like, oh, Marcus Galvao, like that's the underdog pick, like go that's and dump some loot on him. Like hey. I'm not saying that. You, you, you don't have to, that's fine. All but right, he's a all right. Dog. That brings us to our next featherweight bout, Beck Palat Magomedov versus Carl Deaton the third. And Eddie, who are you picking? Carl Deaton the third. You're, um, you're not picking Carl Deaton, are you? Oh no, there's no no possible way. Um, <laughs> this is his first step up into the bright lights. So this is um this is, I think, kind of like a, hey, sorry we had to give you Lance Palmer in your first go-around for uh, Beck Pilat. And so wow. they get, he's getting Carl Deaton third now, you know, because that's a tough, like, 
going against land and that's another issue with this whole rankings or this whole point system is like you're getting matched up with lance palmer in your first go <laughs> like that sucks <laughs> you yep. know like no one wants that that's not that's not the easiest route to take so i think this will be a lot easier for him even though he's a, a, a little bit undersized i think he's he's got what it takes to get the job done here so um he does let guys hang out a little too long beck lot does but you know, I think he'll take the decision. All right. Vic, who are you picking? Yeah, Beg Bullet. Next question. <laughs> okay. Odds on that fight. Um, Deep missed weight, too. Magomedov is a reasonable, but not a huge favorite, honestly, considering where some of the other odds have been, considering Team Revaliev at minus 1,000 and uh, Koga at minus 500. Magomedov mm -hmm. opened at minus 300, is currently minus 275. And Deaton opened at plus 220, is currently plus 225. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe we're missing something about Deaton. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I he, don't think we are. He I think, uh... He's been a submission <laughs> artist for some fights, but not his record's not anything special and i mean this is technically like a this is a lightweight versus a bantam weight yeah that Take would be that featherweight that that would be the thing to miss i suppose uh that brings us to a heavyweight bout jared rocheult versus kelvin tiller and vic who are you picking here yeah, ah, god i mean all right so like the easy lazy pick would have to be rocheult by blanketing but the problem is that Tiller is a dude who can crack, and he is able to, like, find that range and, you know, really hit dudes from the start, right? Like, really sting them. So I, I do think that it's – an upset here would be pretty likely, assuming that Rochelt is a favorite. Um, you know what? I'm going to go reckless here. I'm going to say it's Tiller. I'm going to say Tiller actually makes him pay and, and, and hits him with one or two shots. I don't care how dumb that sounds. I know it's probably we're going to get some other fest 2018 on this one, but whatever. I'm going to go with Tiller. All right, Eddie, who are you taking? Man, so Tiller knocked out Kyle Allen Carr in the first round, or PFL one, but was taken down and controlled until the referee stood them up and brought the, the bout back to its feet. So Tiller could definitely catch Rochalt. I would love to see it. <laughs> That's probably the only way this fight will be exciting. But I got to side with the... You know, the American wrestler being able to get the takedown and do just enough to not get stood up. So, unfortunately, I got Rochelle by decision, but I pray that I'm wrong. I really need to pay more attention to what I, to where, how Kelvin Tiller is looking at these, these days. Because, like, not that long ago, I mean, okay, a while ago, but back in, like, 2014, he was fighting at, like, 195 pounds. Mm, yeah. And he then he was fight like Kevin Sears in 2017, or while well, that was, or uh, Marcus Sursa in 2015, that was 205. And now in his last two bouts, Sears and Alan Carr, especially, I don't know what actually what he weighed in for, uh, at for Sears, but Alan Carr and now this one, he's both weighed in at the heavyweight limit, 265. Like, damn right. Kelvin Tiller is like Jared Rochelle weighed in at 246. Tiller, Tiller is absolutely pushing the edge as a heavyweight, which is interesting for a dude who used to be a pretty, like, lithe cut 205-pounder. It's the reverse Hasegawa. <laughs> the reverse oh. Joe Riggs. There you go. Um, That's interesting. But, I mean, he it, moving up and striking is, is a good idea usually. So Yeah, moving down. But usually you'll see, like, guys – the guys that move up from 205 usually hang around at 240, 235, yeah, exactly. 242, somewhere in there. 265, though, that's insane. I know. Uh, Tiller is currently the underdog, opened at plus 150. It's currently at a plus 245. Rocholt opened at minus 190. It's currently at a minus 295. Rocholt's head is so big and hittable that I mean, if there was ever going to be, like, just that one-punch knockout, it's going to happen in this fight. 
Yeah, but also I you do really have that feeling of Tiller being set up just right to be a dude who just gets blanketed. Oh, he's getting smushed here. <laughs> he's definitely getting smushed. All right, that brings us to another heavyweight bout. Alex Nicholson versus Felipe Linz. Eddie, what are you feeling? Linz has been knocked out in back-to-back -back bouts and by light heavyweights at that. Nicholson, highly venomous, especially at heavyweight where he's never lost. I got Nicholson by a violent and brutal KO. All right. Vic, you disagreeing? Yeah, you know what? I Again, much like Oval, I got a soft spot for Linz, and I'm not really – like, why? Why do you have so, a soft spot for Linz? You know what, man? I've seen some good stuff from him in Bellator. The guy can, you know. Are y'all related? Survive. Is there like some bloodline? Statistically, there? we might be, but no, man. <laughs> I, I just like Nicholson doesn't really have all of it together. I'm not convinced by his recent Camp Soda MMA performance. I just, I, I've never really been sold on him being, you know, a guy who's going to be improving at this point. He's definitely a finished product. And this is just, I, I just don't. I don't really see it, man. I think that he might be able to, with his strength and his length, uh, maybe he might be able to put Linz away, especially with these finishes, uh, these losses that he suffered. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, last time he got sparked, it was by Nemkov. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't really, I don't really know that 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 Nicholson's gonna have like, other than raw brute strength the uh, abilities to survive and, and, and eventually control and win this. So I think Linz is going to be smart enough to stay out of that and uh, pretty much sure he's going to take this one by decision. Ah, oh, man. All right. Linz is so chinny, though. He's chinny at light heavyweight. There's no way he's going to improve his chin at heavyweight. Like, I don't see that. Being... Nicholson yeah. opened at minus 260. is currently out at minus 280. Linz opened at plus 180. is currently up at plus 230. Is there Nicholson by inside the distance? There are no prop bets on this, on any of these. All right, that brings us to uh, Alexander Capitao versus Steven Seiler. Vic, mm -hmm. you taking featherweight bout? Yeah, that's this is a weird one, man, because uh, Danmeida's got some really good striking. Although he just has, he does have a tendency to like forget that he's in an MMA bout and kind of like, you know, put the brakes on the takedowns a little late. Um, Mm, I don't know, man. I, I, Siler, clearly not in his prime anymore. I got to go with that and on this one. Peace and I'm upstanding. All right. Eddie? Almeida got a softball in PFL 1 to get an easy first round uh, sub and six points on the season, submitting Lee Koval, who didn't see that fucking coming, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, just another testament to why this uh, format just really doesn't work in combat sports. But Yeah, that was Lee Koval competing for like the first time in a decade or something, wasn't it? Yeah, he was like 4-1. Oh, like, you know, he, 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 he fought twice. He fought once in 2016 and once in 2017 and not before that. And only 2011 before that. And the guys he beat in 16-17 were 0-0 and 0-2. And and yeah, the fact that that bout got sanctioned in New York is the most impressive thing of that entire card, for sure. Um, so here, uh, I would say Siler is actually the most experienced veteran that Almeida has faced to date. Um, Siler subbed Idrisov in the first round, got himself six points. And subs have really been kind of the ace in the hole for Siler. Like, he's always been a dude down to bang it out, but whenever the fight went to the ground, he would always pull out some sneaky submission and, and was, like, unassumingly dangerous on the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that gave him a lot of early success in his UFC run before everybody learned that he was too crafty on the ground to want to deal with, and then you should only strike with him, and then yeah. he stopped winning at all in the UFC. But yeah. For, like, five or six fights, dude racked up some serious wins. Yeah. So the ace in the hole definitely has been his submissions, but that definitely is not going to be there this time. And I don't think he can he can take over this fight on the feet. So I like Almeida, and I'm going to take him by decision. All right, Almeida is a uh, is the favorite. Opened at minus one sixty five. Is currently at minus two ninety five. And Siler opened at plus one twenty five. Is currently at plus two forty five. That takes us to another heavyweight bout, Frantamar Bahos versus Jack May. Eddie, who you got? Bahos finally did something exciting. In, finally. Uh, in his PFL uh, debut. Yeah, finally. He's always been a guy who just really 
like he teamed up with the Sandman to, to help, you know, put guys to sleep and, and not in the knockout kind of way. So basically his first knockout since uh, Cristiano Souza in 2012 at Shooto Brazil 36. <laughs> yeah. So finally, I think is appropriate uh, yeah. for that. Now, I think this just it comes down to Bahost being the more durable of the two. May usually wins by knockout, but Bahost isn't someone who usually gets knocked out. So I see Bahost being durable enough to find his moment to get himself the, the TKO win. So I, I'll take Bahost mainly because he's more durable, and that actually means a lot of heavyweight. All right. Vic, who are you taking? Well, I, I agree that, uh, with Eddie that uh, he is the more durable guy, but Bahos is also someone who's a lot better at using his range and, like, you know, it may his best odds of success are drawing a guy into like a weird dog fight, you know, and if he doesn't get that and he's probably not going to, in this case, then I just don't really see him being able to have any success uh, in the standup department. I don't think his wrestling is going to be good enough to take this to the ground or control the guy against the fence. Cause Bahos is, especially now that he doesn't have to cut weight. Uh, he's not going to be someone that he can bully. So I'm going to go with France tomorrow on this. All right. Bahos is the uh, uh, underdog, actually, going in. Opened at minus or plus 100. Is currently up at plus 132. May opened at minus 140. Is currently at minus 158. I don't agree with that. May is definitely more likely to get knocked out here. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> yeah. Jack May, he he had some success since getting booted from the uh, from the UFC and uh, losing to Chase Sherman and Titan FC, but it's against Tony Lopez, Dave Cryer, and Josh Copeland. Mm. So. Josh Copeland's impressive. Yeah, stopping He's, Josh Copeland—that's a big deal. Copeland's gotten a lot better to his credit. Yeah, but I, for him, for anyone to be like, oh yeah, this guy—he's the one that's. He's gonna knock out the host, or he's gonna stop the host. Like, I, I, there's no evidence of that for me there. Yeah. All right, that brings us to our co-main event featherweight bout: Andre Harrison, Nazareno Malagari. Eddie, who you got? Andre Harrison. It's an easy pick for me. He's undefeated. Has really tight fundamentals on the feet. Real conservative with the stand up. He doesn't open it up a lot and expose himself or very respectable wrestling game in uh yeah I don't I don't see Malagari's going to want to grapple and it's not going to work out for him. I think uh Harrison's just too fundamentally sound everywhere. So I got Harrison by a very boring decision unfortunately. All right. Vic, what about you? Uh, I, I disagree partially. Uh, Malagari, the last wrestler that he faced, or last person he fought that had a pure wrestling background was Rad Martinez, and he lost that fight. Now, sure, that was ages ago. Fine. But it's like uh, Harrison, the level in which he's at, the athleticism that he brings, I think he's definitely going to win. I don't think it's going to be boring. I think he's going to remain super, super active, work a takedown, and just keep, you know, just just not stop until you got to peel him off. So, uh I actually think this will be a lot more dynamic than, than Eddie might think. I don't know. The, the way you just described that did not describe excitement for no. people. <laughs> well, listen, it's it's going to be brutal, and it's not going to take very I, long. You know, I, I like Andre Harrison. He's talented and all that, but his career has been marked by his willingness to just sort of stay defensively sound and keep a fight at the slowest pace possible. Yeah. yeah. He's, well, he's like, he'll, as long as he's up by a point, he's cool to just yeah. chill. You know, if, there, if there's a fight where he might be able to buck that trend, it might be this one. Maybe might be, but Malagari is actually pretty tough. Oh, very tough. Yeah, and yeah. I think he's actually wise enough on the ground to not. He's not going to get like. I mean, he did take him back to Arshin to a decision. If there's a fight where he's he should have been Andre Harrison should have been like able to assert some dominance, you you would kind of expect it to be that. That's also true. Uh Harrison is the favorite. Pretty big one. Opened at minus 320. Is out to minus 630 right now. Malagari opened at plus 240. Is up at plus 456. That brings us to our main event. A mystery. Who's going to win? Vic, Lance Palmer, or Jumabek Tuarshan? 
we might be better off just leaving this to the patented Mohegan Sun coin because it's, <laughs> it's such a coin flip. Tight okay. fight. Now that you're offering, can I get in on that? Can you just flip the coin for me? Because I honestly, <laughs> like, really, why? Yeah. No, no, seriously, fuck the coin. No, I mean, come on. Why are we still really doing this? Come on. Bomber all day. Yeah. Just infinitely better athlete, better wrestler. Eddie, you got a, a another feeling on that? Mm, 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 mm. You go from Andre Harrison to Lance Palmer because that's fair. I got Palmer by submission, actually. I think he will get the finish here. He's not even flipping the coin. You see this? You see this? Oh, there's. It's not. It's not that. that. Not, I know. What I'm it's saying that. like the coin. The coin is reserved for the fights I really don't care about because it's either it, they're either old or it's such a, a meaningless fight that there's no real analysis to be had. I, I gotta say that that uh, PFL here better hope that like Siler and May, one of them gets an upset in here, maybe. Uh, bump Lynn's Nicholson up into like above Bahos versus May because otherwise you've got a run of uh Capitao, Bahos, Harrison, and Palmer, and then that Nicholson fight, and then a Rocholt fight. And like that's a lot of dudes who tend to win with like stifling control. Man, mm. so it's like they open up the card with Nicholson Lins, which almost guarantees a finish. So it sucks you in. Yep. And then Almeida Siler's going to suck. So it's like, well, maybe this one will be good. We got heavyweights again. But then that's going to suck. And then it's like, okay, well, maybe the co main event will be cool. And then that's going to suck. Yeah, and then well, the event's going to suck. Hang on. So far with PFL events, so what I've noticed is some of the fights that we thought were going to really, really suck have turned out to have some pretty surprising finishes. And that's like, it's not that the trend is going to continue. It's like, well, I don't know. Maybe something's yeah. kind of working. So far. To their credit, their point system hopefully pushes some of the these very yeah. heavy control fighters to be a little more dynamic. But we'll see. Palmer. Uh, it hasn't to up until this point. Well, Palmer got his – he got a submission over Bekbalat Magomedov. But yeah, yeah, he beat a Bantamweight. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, on that note, we're going to wrap this all up. You can find me on Twitter at the Zane Simon. You can find Eddie on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. You can find Vic on Twitter at Vic M. Rodriguez. You can find all three of us over at bloodyelbow.com day in, day out. We'll have a PFL uh, results post over at yes. Bloody Elbow tomorrow night. And we will be back. I will be back with the MMA vivisection for UFC Hamburg tomorrow. I'll be back with Eddie for the sixth round after that show. And uh, then we will be back next week for whatever the UFC card next week is. I don't remember. Uh, is it that UFC on Fox 30 card? Yeah. That should All be right. it, I think. All right. We'll be back for that as well. So give this video a like. That's a thumbs up thing down there. Subscribe Do to our YouTube channel, MMANation.com. Both those things help us a ton. That's where you get all the latest Buddy Elbow shows, videos, analysis, all those interviews, all those things we do week in, week out. So thanks, everyone. We will see you soon.